It all started in the mid-1990s inside a quiet Maryland home. A young programmer named Tim Sweeney sat in his parents' basement surrounded by old CRT monitors and dreams of something bigger. He had already made a few small DOS games like ZZT, but what he really wanted was a platform, a foundation that could power any game, not just his own. In 1995, Sweeney began building what would become the very first Unreal Engine. Back then, game developers usually made engines that worked only for their games. But Tim had a different vision. He wanted a toolset that any creator could use. Three years later, in 1998, Epic released Unreal, a game that stunned the world. It had colored lighting, reflective water, dynamic shadows, all in real time. In an era dominated by Quake 2, this looked magical. Critics loved the visuals, developers loved the flexibility, and quietly, Epic realized something important. Their engine was as valuable as their game. This realization would change everything. The early 2000s were the glory days of arena shooters. The Unreal Tournament was king. Fast-paced, stylish and ridiculously fun, it wasn't just a game. It was a technology showcase. Underneath all that chaos, Unreal Engine 2 was quietly rewriting the rules. It introduced better physics, real-time shadows and environments that felt massive for the time. It powered Splinter Cell, America's Army, and Deus Ex, Invisible War. These games proved Unreal wasn't just a shooter engine. It could do stealth, role-playing, and military simulation. In fact, the US Army even used Unreal Engine 2 to train soldiers. Imagine military recruits learning tactics inside what was, in its core, a video game engine. By now, Epic wasn't just a game studio anymore. It was becoming a technology company. Then came Unreal Engine 3. And if you've ever wondered what the next generation of gaming will look like, take a look at Epic's Unreal Engine 3. This was the era of Gears of War, Mass Effect, Bioshock, and Batman. For the first time, games looked like movies with lifelike lighting complex shaders and physics that brought the world to life. Developers suddenly had the power to create deep emotional experiences that felt cinematic. And for the first time, you could recognize Unreal games by their look. That glossy, high contrast realism that defined an entire generation. Around this time, Epic started licensing their engine everywhere. If you played a game on Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3, chances are you were playing Unreal. Meanwhile, another competitor was on the rise. Unity. Unity made it easy for indie developers to make mobile or small-scale games. But Unreal? Unreal was the big league. The tool of choice for cinematic, console and AAA titles. Then came 2012, and Epic made a bold move that shocked the industry. They unveiled Unreal Engine 4, and instead of keeping it expensive and exclusive, they opened it up to everyone. At first through a small subscription, and then completely free. Anyone, anywhere in the world could use Unreal Engine. Suddenly, a teenager in Brazil or India could build something that looked like a million-dollar production. And then, Fortnite happened. It started as a simple co-op game and turned into one of the biggest cultural phenomena in history. Fortnite wasn't just a hit game, it was a live, evolving world powered by Unreal Engine 4. But Unreal's reach didn't stop at gaming. Hollywood started taking notice, especially when The Mandalorian used Unreal Engine to project digital environments onto massive LED walls. No green screen, no waiting for renders, real-time filmmaking. Unreal had officially stepped 
into the world of cinema. Then, in 2020, Epic unveiled Unreal Engine 5, and it was jaw-dropping. It introduced two revolutionary technologies, Nanite and Lumen. Nanite allowed artists to use film-quality assets directly in the engine, no more polygon limits. Lumen brought fully dynamic lighting and reflection, light that reacted in real time. It looked like pre-rendered CGI, but it wasn't. It was real time. Developers couldn't believe what they were seeing. Epic had just closed the gap between games and movies. Then came MetaHuman Creator, a browser-based tool that let artists make photorealistic digital humans in minutes. From Final Fantasy Remake and Fortnite to The Matrix Awakens, Unreal was no longer just powering games, it was powering reality. Even NASA began using Unreal to simulate missions. Car manufacturers designed vehicles inside it. It became the ultimate creative sandbox for every industry imaginable. And today, Epic Games is so much more than its humble beginnings. After the massive success of Fortnite, the company expanded rapidly, hiring thousands of people and attracting huge investments. By 2022, Epic was valued at around $32 billion. It's no longer just a game studio. Epic owns multiple studios around the world. Psyonix, the creators of Rocket League, Mediatonic, known for Fall Guys, Harmonix, famous for music games, strategic giants like Tencent, Disney, Sony also hold stakes in the company. And Unreal Engine? It's everywhere. Developers in games, film, TV, architecture and even automotive design rely on it. So here's the question, what happens next? How far can real-time technology go? Will we one day live in a fully simulated world built in engines like Unreal? The journey of Unreal Engine isn't just about software anymore. It's about the future of imagination itself. And the future? <laughs>